All right, we're in Florida here, in actually in the Orlando area. And I'm with one of my favorite fish keepers, Jerry Martin. Hey guys. And he has a channel called Jerry's Fish Room on YouTube, and yep. there'll be a link in the description. You can check that out. And uh, we're gonna talk about his fish room, and I'm gonna show you some great shots of some fish that are just absolutely crazy. So let's start off, uh, Jerry, how long you been in fish keeping? Well, it started for me when I was about 25. Um, I did it for a very short time. I uh, didn't really know what I did, I uh, was doing at the time. I started with Africans, um, then kind of got out of it. And then about eight years ago, um, had a issue with some chest pains, went into a cardiologist just to check everything out. He basically told me I had too much stress in my life to find something to help relieve that. and. Uh, Hence, that's where the fish hobby got back into it for me. I've heard, uh, I've heard fish as keeping fish as therapy from a lot of folks. I mean, at the Aquashella that we just attended, I had one gentleman walk up to me who was at my talk at the East Tennessee, uh, yeah. at the East Tennessee Aquarium Society, and he talked about how how PTSD had had been helped a lot with fish keeping. So I really get where you're coming from. Yeah. And so how many years have you really been like a an avid fish keeper? Uh, avid for about eight years now. Uh, started for me with a 55 gallon tank um, in an apartment that we lived. We lived on the bottom floor. Um, didn't really ask whether I could have it or not. Just kind of went and got one and uh, started with a 55 gallon tank with some mbuna and uh, sent it on as catfish, which you guys will see in the uh, in the African tank, uh, that's probably my still my uh, original fish from about seven, eight years ago now. That's amazing. You know, I want to talk in this video about both the, the, the ups, the ups and the downs. Uh, fish keeping, of course, keeping it real, right? Yeah. We yeah. have uh, we have victories and we have defeats. Um, tell me, what, what was? Let, let's start with the bad and work our way to the good. What what do you think has been your uh, the, the biggest setback and your takeaway from that setback in the hobby? I think probably for me it's been a lot of just my own personal mistakes as I've learned. I'm kind of a guy that um, I do listen to videos, I watch some videos, but I, I kind of like to just uh, work my way through things and uh, unfortunately I made some, some mistakes. Uh, probably the biggest has been the patience. We all talk about having patience in the uh, in the hobby and how important it is and so rushing things those types of things uh you know again the you guys probably for those that have saw it or if you haven't go check it out i do have a tragedy in the fish room video uh it was probably my worst tragedy uh where i had a uh, a bunch of electric blue acara that i had bred a bunch of fry or juveniles Everything was going good. They were in my garage. I came home one day and fish were everywhere. They had jumped out and they basically lost the entire uh, 60 or plus odd uh, fry or juveniles that I had. Uh, so that's been a rough one. Um, I think part of the, the hobby that I, I enjoy but also is hard is when I have that favorite fish, uh, which I did just lose and not understanding why. I think that's probably a setback. I lost my big Oscar who was my puppy my wet puppy for lack of a better way of describing it and uh, you know losing the fish like that not really understanding how or why that those things happen yeah that, that's a a very common thing i hear you can't get the why and and when people ask me about stuff like that it's usually preceded by my water parameters were perfect he was good yesterday and this morning he's dead and they, it, it's the mystery i think and i think people don't realize that sometimes fish get things like humans do you know they get a yeah you know they have a an organ failure they have you know they have the same kind of things that we go through with old age especially and but it does sound like you gave that guy a good life yeah just you know you kind of always go back to the what did i do what how did i contribute yeah. to the problem you know yeah. um specifically with him had uh, a start a hole in the head and uh, started treating him right away with medications and so I put a little in his food and put a little bit in the water and you know you ask yourself did I put too much whatever but you know who knows you really can't figure it out so yeah yeah beat, beat yourself up uh, one other let, 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 let's switch this a little bit to the 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 bright spot like if you're to look at and I know there's probably a lot of them and it's hard to kind of isolate it just to one but 
looking at the entire time you've been keeping fish, what what moments are the ones that are probably the brightest, the ones that you look back on and go, wow, well, that was that was really epic, what, what happened right there? Yeah, I think for me, the the biggest thing is, um, is, is the first time I uh, actually was successful um, at raising fry and kind of seeing the whole uh, picture of fry to, to adult life uh, and what that looked like. Um, you know, for me, it started, I had no intention on breeding. It started with uh, getting a, uh, a dolphin, uh, Mori, African cichlid from my local fish store that was supposed to be a male and uh, brought him home and uh, a couple two weeks later he spit a whole bunch of fry so I ended up pulling those fry out and uh, raising them up and I still have one of the original fry uh, today so for me I love that just the whole nature aspect of it to watch a fillet fish developed from fry to, to adulthood and then being able to breed some myself to provide that same joy of fish keeping to other people, you know. And then on top of it, I love getting other people in the hobby. Very cool. So in your fish right now, let's talk a little bit about this 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 uh, this African cichlid tank. This is a 180 gallon tank that you picked up from our friends from Joe and and his group over there at yeah. Glass Cages. We had a great time with Joe at the yeah at Aquashella. Tell me a little bit about that, this, the fish that are in this aquarium. Which ones would you say are your favorites, your stars, the ones that you enjoy the most? Favorites and stars. I know I've caught Ben a few times on this live stream asking that question, trying to get him to pin something down. And it, I can kind of relate to what, what he goes through because there's so many of them I really, really like. But if I had to, if I had to say you could, I can narrow it down to two. If somebody came up and asked me and said, look, you got to empty your tank, but you can only have, keep these two types of fish anymore, what would they be? And they would be, without a shadow of a doubt, my Malawi trout and my starry night. Those are probably my two favorite fish. Um, but I like the way I have it set up with, uh, I got some really large fish in there and I got a lot of smaller stuff in there, um, you know, keep the aggression down but uh, just the colors and and all of that but my two favorites starry night malawi tribe hands down very cool and let's take a look at some of these other tanks it's you're not you're not exclusively all about african cichlids you're uh, you obviously have a lot of other good stuff in there and tell me about these these little shellies that you've got here ah well shellies african cichlids i love them uh Different lake, Tanganyikan. Um, got really turned on to those, I guess, to some degree, watching uh, some of Primetime Aquatics. Uh, he had a lot of Shelleys. Uh, talked to a couple people that have had them. And one of the things I love about them is I talk about nature and, and, and why I love the hobby so much, you know, is with these Shelleys, they're a really perfect example of being able to see how a fish really reacts in nature because you set up a tank and the sand is completely level you throw their shells in there and in two months nothing looks the same and just to watch them pick up move shells pick up and move sand and bury those things uh, it's just the interaction is just amazing. I lo absolutely love those shell dwellers. And, and just just across the way here or next to it here you have a <laughs> You have a tank full of uh, rainbows. Yeah. How did these? Uh, how do you end up in rainbows? Tell us a story about that. Well, the rainbows. My wife has always loved rainbows and wanted them from you know when we first got into the hobby. Um, but you know they're kind of expensive. I didn't know much about them, so I really kind of stayed away from them. And then unfortunately, a good friend of mine, blind fish keeper Brandon, he's having to shut his fish room down, and he had all of these rainbows and. Remembering it was one of my wife's favorite fish. I went ahead and bought the rainbows off of them and threw them in that 55 and that's kind of how they became where they're at and Again, it's probably one of her favorite tanks that she loves. So again, happy wife happy life Especially in the fish <laughs> hobby Gives you a little more latitude to go get stuff you like <laughs> It's always a give-and-take now let's talk about these. Uh, the, the, maybe one of my favorite. I mean, apart from your, uh, apart from your, as you would think, your Malawi trout, and uh, that albino eye biter. 
that giant in Cygnus who just on the size alone is so impressive. But let, let's talk a little bit about uh, this other tank which has these beautiful clown loaches and red spotted serums which you know I love and and also you've got in here a, 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 a is that an albino birch is it biter a biter an albino biter in here there's uh, some beautiful geos which you know I love how did how did this tank kind of evolve into what it is now so actually um I, you know, when I moved here, I brought my 55 with me. I kind of kept the Africans in there. And then uh, on the way moving in, I bought a 120 gallon tank um, on uh, Craigslist from somebody. And so I set that tank up originally in the front to do exactly that. I wanted Oscars, I wanted Severums, and those types of fish. And so it's kind of developed, but sitting in the front room looking at my South Americans, no one. How much I love them, but Africans are my thing. Uh, I ended up taking, and uh, I got a 125 uh, and kept the Africans in it for a little while. And then I made the big switch once I got the 180 gallon uh, tank from glass cages. And uh, so kind of took what I had at the time. Uh, I had a big Oscar 14 inch monster. You guys have probably seen them in the video. If not, you can check that out. And so I just did a mixed bag on the South Americans. I love the Geos. Uh, probably my wife has even got gets credit for that because she's the one that loved the Jirapari. And so I bought that fish for her. And uh, at that time I had two uh, red red top tapajos. And uh, and then the Bicher again. I, I like Bichers. Didn't know much about them. Uh, and I ended up getting that from uh, from my buddy Brandon as well. He ended up. Uh, selling that to me as well. Very cool. So, so where do you where do you go from here, Jerry? What what's your next what's your next plan? Like, what's what's the next move in that fish room? Well, um, as many of you know, I've started uh, pretty much got most of the fish on the Tanganyikan tank, the 55 gallon uh, Tanganyikan tank. So, uh, I've got some more lava rock and things that I'm going to be bringing in. Uh, the uh, main focus, I guess, for me is I'm going to do some additional breeding on my shell dwellers because uh, there seems to be a market here locally. A lot of fish stores don't have those, so I'm going to try to see what I can do uh, to again feed that side of the hobby of just being able to grow up fish from, from ground zero. If you could do it all over again, and I know that once you get your, your substrate established and you've got some good bacteria in there, you don't want to mess with it, but if you could do it all over again, would you would you stick with the white substrate or would you go with a different color? Oh, absolutely stay with the white substrate. Uh, the fish pop against that. Um, you know, again, it, it does show a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, stuff, detritus and, and so forth on it, but not not too, too bad, but absolutely would stay with the white. If I'm going to change anything, and probably many of us have heard this over and over again, I know I have as I watched, is I would have, in retrospect, built my stand to handle 75 gallon tanks since the footprint is basically the same other than a little deeper and uh, would have been a little easier to stack the rock without having uh, and, and leaving areas to help me clean that substrate. Yeah we talked about this yesterday one of the best tips you can give to a new fish keeper is starting off is if you've got the space and if you've got the budget go with the biggest tank you can because you'll you'll be happy down the road and if you do start with a small tank you can always turn that small tank into a hospital quarantine tank later and of course upgrade to a bigger tank but uh, initially, if, if you can get that 125, that 70, uh, do it. You'll be you'll be happy in the long run. Jerry, I want to thank you for this uh, taking the time to talk to me about your your fish room. Uh, for those of you uh, who are not subscribed, uh, let, let's let's give uh, Jerry a, a bump on his on his uh, on his YouTube channel. Jerry's fish room. I'll, I'll I'll put a link up here so you can go right right to the fish room. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Jerry, for for hosting me here in in beautiful Florida, beautiful weather today, gorgeous weather uh, for the Aquashella Daytona Beach. And uh, big shout out to, to Jerry and his wife for having me here and, and tolerating me for several days. <laughs> and uh, that's it That's it for us. Be sure to uh, subscribe to Jerry's channel. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And uh, we'll see you on Saturday for the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. Jerry is a moderator there. So watch your step because he will come down hard on you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, folks. You're the best. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Keep loving the fish, guys. There you go. Keep loving the fish. That's his motto. Bye-bye. <laughs>